Hey guys, it's James back again with a continuation of the uh, door lock actuator video that I did a few weeks ago on the uh, Honda Odyssey. Now when uh, diagnosing this problem, I actually ran into a few hiccups because there was actually multiple failures. I uh, initially thought it was just the door lock actuator that was uh, causing the uh, driver's side door lock not to function correctly. Um, but, you know, upon further investigation, realized that there was actually a continuation of that problem, or rather, you know, a multiplication. What I'm saying is, is that um, in certain cases, when the door lock actuators on Honda start to fail, specifically with the driver's door lock actuator, uh, it can actually cause the passenger multiplex computer to fail. Now, there's a lot, not a lot of reliable information on the internet to uh, to help with this, so so it was a little bit of a struggle to, to actually verify what was happening. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what we're looking at here is a uh, part of the wiring diagram for the uh, 2004 Odyssey. This is going to be very similar between different Hondas and different year Odysseys. Um, what what really is important here is is the uh, door lock actuator and the wires that go to it for this diagnosis. So we have um, a white red wire and a light green red wire that run to the door lock actuator. Now there's actually several more wires that run to the actuator, but um, for this part we're only concerned with the white red and the light green red. So in order to diagnose why the actuator isn't working correctly, why it doesn't always work, why it doesn't work ever, just really depends on your situation. But to diagnose that we need to understand uh, how it actually works and where the wires run to and what they do. So the white red and the light green red wires like I said is what we're going to focus on right now. So what happens when you hit the unlock and the lock buttons you have a uh, positive and a negative voltage that run through the white red and or the light green red. Now depending on the position that the locks in and whether you hit lock or unlock is going to is going to determine whether the wire is you know a positive voltage or a negative voltage so say it's um, it's you hit unlock you're gonna have either positive on the white red and negative on the light green red or vice versa you're gonna have negative on the white red and positive on the light green red so how this determination is made how does the computer decide what position the actuator is in when you hit the button and what it needs to do well there's three more wires on the that connect to the actuator and within these wires a signal is sent to the passengers multiplex control unit to the computer um, that controls different things such as the door locks and windows and things like that anyways so a signal is sent to the multiplex computer it tells it what position the actuator is in and when you hit that button it'll know what it needs to do so typically when diagnosing a door lock actuator problem you want to get as close as you can to the actuator uh, a sub harness or somewhere around the connector or even remove the connector altogether from the actuator and apply power and ground see what happens another way is just to use a voltmeter and hit the button and see if you're getting power ground to the actuator um, the, we can't stop there though so let's say we do remove the connector from the actuator and we apply power and ground to it and the actuator does what it's supposed to we then reverse the connection the polarity and the actuator moves in the opposite direction so if that happens then obviously the actuator is okay now typically on the on these Hondas if we're to this point we most likely have found that the actuator is in fact bad but we can't stop there we need to look again at the white red and the light green red wires so using a power probe although you could just as easily use a um, voltmeter or multimeter I probe the uh, white red wire first so you hit the unlock button you should see either a positive or a negative voltage you hit the lock button it should reverse polarity so unlock lock it should reverse polarity each time you hit that button if that's okay we'll look at the light green red wire now this one should do the same thing but it should be completely reversed as what the white red wire is doing so when we're probing the light green red wire it should 
be the opposite polarity as the white red wire. So when one wire is positive, the other one should read negative, and it will change every time you hit the unlock and lock button. So if you're to this point and you see that the voltages are doing what you would expect or how I just described, how the reversing polarity every time you hit the lock and unlock button, then you know that the actuator is the only problem. So what happens if the voltages aren't switching the way they should be? Well, referring to the wiring diagram, we have a fuse, we have a relay, uh, there's the keyless security and, and all that good stuff. Um, so these are all things that you should check just in a normal electrical diagnosis. Um, the interesting thing here is the multiplex control unit on the uh, passenger side of the car. It is what I had the most trouble finding any reliable information about. Uh, there's plenty of information out there and lots of guesses on forums and things like that where people don't have any proof that, that, that this is what's wrong and, and all that stuff. Uh, but I did actually found proof, I actually uh, got to this point and that's what we're here to talk about. Okay, so where is the multiplex control unit? Uh, it is here on the uh, the passenger side of the of the van or the car, whatever you're working on, of the Honda. It's the passenger side uh, multiplex unit, so it's on the passenger side. Uh, looking under the glove box, it's down here in the bottom right corner, and here is a little fuse box, and it is actually mounted to the back of the fuse box. Now, at this point in my diagnosis, I've already ruled out everything else all the wires have tested good the relays good the fuses good uh, so I know that the problem has got to be here at the multiplex so I don't have any um, any uh, reservations about going ahead and removing the fuse box and the multiplex unit now this thing could be a real bitch to get out we need to remove all the connectors which there there could be anywhere from five to seven connectors on the front of the fuse box and then three or four on the rear in my case I actually had five on the front and four on the rear um, but we need to get all those off in order to completely remove the fuse box and get access to the multiplex on the back of the fuse box once the fuse box is out uh, you'll see the multiplex here plugged into the back um, it has these tabs that you'll most likely break that's okay because it's still being held in by a connector on the back of the multiplex so with, with all the tabs broken or released or whatever carefully pry out the multiplex and we'll see the connector on the back of what I'm talking about. So at this point I could easily just go ahead and get a new multiplex and replace it because I'm sure that's what's wrong with it and you could do that too or we could go a little bit further and actually verify that something's going on with this multiplex. The case just snaps apart so once that's apart I'm go ahead and pull the circuit board out and get a good look at it. Uh, this one is really small and it, it may or may not be the same as what you're looking at. Uh, if it's not a 2004 Honda Odyssey EX, then it probably will be different, but it's going to be something similar to this. Now, in order to find what was actually happening here, uh, my solder components on, on my board were really tiny. I couldn't really see anything, so I had to take a picture with my phone and then zoom in really close to actually see what's happening. So to see what I'm talking about, you'll probably need to make sure you're in full HD at full screen because these things are real tiny and uh, kind of hard to see. So if we take a good look here close to the um, the uh, C50 junction or joint, uh, it's over here by the green connector. If we look really closely at that circuit path, you can see that it's burnt. There's a burnt line um, most of the way of that whole path. If you look really close, you can actually see where it's burned in two. So we verified that the multiplex does have, in fact, a burnt circuit which is the reason why the uh, driver's side door lock is not working so we could go ahead and replace the multiplex or we could choose to repair it. Now to repair it uh, what you need to do is restore continuity uh, in the circuit and to do that you're going to need to be pretty skilled at soldering tiny little things with the right soldering iron which would need to be a low powered soldering iron specifically made for electronic components like this. If you're using a high powered soldering iron then you'll most likely melt the board or, or do some other damage and you know it'll become useless at that point anyway and you'll have to replace it so I don't really recommend uh, repairing it if you're not skilled with soldering tiny components and, uh, and if you don't have the right equipment then you should just go ahead and replace it that being said if you do have the skills and the tools or you just want to give it a try and who cares if it messes up you'll just replace it anyway whatever um, all you need to do is solder a jumper wire between uh, these two points 
basically all we're needing to do is to restore continuity to repair this circuit just think of this burnt part as a as a burnt or broken wire and we just want to replace it with you know a new wire so that's really it guys uh, assuming that you've already verified everything else in the uh, and the door lock system is working correctly or you've replaced the actuator and that's doing what it's supposed to be doing the fuses are good the relays good all that stuff's good assuming that you verified and or repaired everything else once we solder this jumper wire in it should fix your door lock problem of course like I said if you don't have the skills or tools to solder this correctly uh, then you might as well just go ahead and, and buy a new one they're not that expensive or you know like I said as well you could just go ahead and attempt the repair not a huge deal if you mess something up because you know you'll just have to buy a new one anyway but besides that I just want to remind you that this is a 2004 Honda Odyssey uh, passenger multiplex computer uh, all Hondas have multiplex computers uh, they may be different on your Honda it may be in a different spot slightly it may look differently the circuit board may have different pin numbers um, but essentially we're looking for the same thing and it's going to be in a very similar location whether it's an element or a pilot or a CRV or a cord or a Civic they're all going to have one assuming they have power door locks if it didn't you probably wouldn't be watching this video um, but that being said it's going to be very similar so look for the burn spot if you find it then you know for sure that the multiplex is bad and whether or not you choose to repair it doesn't matter because at this point you've already diagnosed it correctly or at least this part of the system correctly because if there's any circuit that's burned then we know it's bad so to wrap this up guys this is the problem that I had on the uh, on the uh, Honda Odyssey doesn't mean it's going to be the problem that you have but from the uh, the research that I've done it seems to be fairly common that when the uh, door like actuator goes out it can easily take out the multiplex computer um, I didn't find a whole lot of reliable information but just from kind of what I'm figuring is happening is as the door like actuator starts to fail and the multiplex is trying to operate it it probably builds up a certain amount of heat or uh, you know the current flow is, is increased or, or whatever what have you and it ends up burning it out now if the door like actuator just fails outright and just stops working altogether it may or may not take out the uh, the uh, multiplex I don't know the the point is is that it seems to be very common that when a door like actuator goes the multiplex as well goes so they should both be checked but you know you should check the whole system you know the fuse obviously needs to be good the relay all the basic stuff broken wires and things like that um, but as far as uh, as far as um, diagnosing it this is a not so quick but relatively easy way to at least rule out the multiplex because you take it apart if you see a burnt circuit you know it's bad doesn't mean it's the only thing that's bad like I said the actuator is probably bad too um, but at least it's a good verification and you can choose whether or not you want to repair it or replace it feel free to refer to the uh, door lock actuator replacement video it's a full you know detailed video on how to replace the uh, the actuator on the Odyssey although it's very similar on all Hondas of this vintage and uh, Hondas, Hondas generally speaking uh, it'll be mostly identical on uh, pilots and elements and, and things like that and very similar across all Honda models so as always thanks for watching and good luck with your repair